Hi, I'm Senator Jack Reed, and it's my pleasure and privilege to be able to read Layla's Happiness. My name is Layla. I'm seven years old. Layla means night beauty, and I love the night. The dark sky is pretty. It's the color of dark purple plums. And the full moon, well, it's my favorite. It sits in the sky like a wish flower's sister. If I could reach the moon, I'd blow on it and wish to play the trumpet well without ever having to practice. I think happiness is climbing a tree or wearing purple or eating spaghetti without a fork. It's my dad when he talks about growing up in South Carolina and my mom when she reads me poetry. Happiness is planting a tomato seed and watching it grow in my favorite place, the community garden down the block. In the garden, I can dance with a ladybug on my finger, see butterflies, and chase my friend Juan. I can feed chickens and give all the trees names. My name is Kate Lentz and I'm the director of the Rhode Island Center for the Book. The Rhode Island Center for the Book is honored to participate in the Library of Congress Read Around the States Initiative with Senator Jack Reed. The Rhode Island Center for the Book is the Rhode Island affiliate of the Library of Congress and we work together with the Library of Congress to promote books, reading, libraries, and literacy throughout our state. Thank you to Senator Jack Reed, our country's library champion, for joining us in this program. Senator Reed chose to read Layla's Happiness by Mariah Dessa, a Carrie Talley. And we are thrilled to announce that Layla's Happiness is the 2021 Rhode Island Great Reads book, and it will represent our state at the National Book Festival in Washington, D.C. in September. Yay. Yay. <laughs> it's a perfect pick. It is a joyous book full of sunshine. I'm beyond excited to be here with Mariah Dessa at the South Providence Library here in Rhode Island. Mariah, Mariah Dessa is a PhD student at Brown University here in Providence, and her adult works include Strut, Dear Continuum, Letters to a Poet, Crafting Liberation, and Karma's Footsteps. Mariah Dessa is the subject of the short film, I Leave My Colors Everywhere. She creates cine poems with her husband and self-care posters and healing herb potions with her daughters. The award-winning Layla's Happiness is her first picture book. Congrats on all the success of, of Layla's happiness. Thank right? That's, you. I'm just so excited. No, thank um, you so much. So you chose this location, the beautiful yes. South Providence Library, for our conversation today. And can you tell us why you chose the library? Uh, our daughter goes to school here. She goes to school a couple of blocks away. And so we're familiar with the neighborhood. And my husband told me, you have to come to this library. You're going to love it. So we came here and I fell in love with it and with Ms. Trejo, who is a children's librarian here. And so this was a natural, kind of a natural fit. We did a, we actually did a, a school visit here, but via technology, right? Because of the pandemic. And so this is a really comfortable place for me. So libraries mean a lot to you. And did you visit the library growing up and with your daughters? And Oh, yeah, the library was a place that I think saved my sanity. If I have any sanity left, it's because of the library. <laughs> I used to take my daughters to the Jamaica Library, the Central Library branch when they were little. Um, and we would spend hours in there, right? We would get lost in just enjoying books and in the programs and in the summer. They do a lot of work, right? They have all sorts of things. There's the summer reading and all those. So 
it was a place where I could go and just still immerse myself in books and keep learning while my daughters were learning. So that's something that I absolutely, yeah, I cherish that. There's another library in New York called the Langston Hughes Library. Oh, yeah. yeah, would uh, do amazing, amazing cultural work there. So, you know, li libraries have really helped me. And we just got familiar with our local library here in Providence, which is Mount Pleasant, and very lovely people there, too. So I'm excited to get to know the libraries as things open up. That's so great. Um, so as a poet, what led you to write a picture book? Uh, having daughters and wanting them to see themselves in books, right? I started writing children's books in 2005, 2006, around the time my first daughter, Serene, was born. And so it was really an attempt. We were living in Belgium, and it was hard to find any books with black children in them. And when we moved back to New York, I still had a hard time in stores, actually, right? The library is different, but in stores, I would not see the books I wanted on shelves. And so, since I was a writer and am a writer, I thought I need to write the book, yeah. right? Whatever it is I want to see, I'll write it. And so I started there. And I actually used to take what I was working on to the librarian at the Central Library to get Aww. feedback on it. And I remember the first thing I took there, she was like, this has potential, but you got to work on the rhyme scheme. You need to, you know, I was trying to do Dr. Seuss. Yeah. And she was like, oh, not so much, but keep working on it. And so, you know, I mean, it would, but that was really nurturing. It was really, and so I, I kept writing. I kept writing. And so this book, Layla, I, I found the initial draft, the initial writing of it, I think it was 2012. Wow. Yep, 2012. And I met Claudia, my publisher at Enchanted Lion Books, because my husband met her at a party. And like, my wife writes told those books. So that was, oh my, I don't even know when, but from 2012, the book came out in 2019. Claudia mm -hmm. and I went to contract somewhere in between there, like 2015. So a long, long journey, right? Yeah. yeah. And I like to say that Layla in the book, she says she's seven years old. She really was seven <laughs> years old, right? At the time, yep. yep. 2012 to 2019, she's really seven years old. Wow. I know. It's kind of crazy. It's amazing. Yep. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the main character, Layla? You know, how did she come about? What does her name be? What does her name mean? Why'd you choose it? Tell us yeah. more about that character. Oh, yeah. I love Layla. <laughs> Who doesn't love Layla? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, Layla, I think she's a combination of a lot of different people. Um, kids who I would see just out at community gardens, because I used to spend a lot of time at community gardens um, doing, well, wanting to garden, wanting to learn about herbs and plants. And then also I did some volunteer teaching there with little babies. And so that was, you know, that was something that I think inspired Layla. And in my own daughters, I think pieces, parts of them. My husband has said that Layla is me. Mm. Um, I can't do, I don't climb trees, right? So that's one thing, but just, um, I think it's a combination of, of a lot of things that make people who I've seen around me happy. So I think that's, that's where she comes from. And her name, I have a fabulous friend in Oakland whose name is Layla. Mm. and she's a dancer and a mother and an educator. And so ever since I met that friend, the name Layla has been in my head. And so I played around with the spelling of Layla, which means night beauty in Arabic. Mm. And so, yeah, I've, I've been in love with that name and I think I was looking for an opportunity to use it for someone as exuberant as my friend Layla is. So yeah, Layla Jenkins Perez, shout out to Layla. <laughs> Um, what, what, what would you like readers to take away from this book? Oh, I think I want us to remember that simple joys are really important. Right? Like sometimes, I mean, even I get caught up and think, well, if I could do this or if I could do this to my house or if I could write, if I could like that, that would, that would be happy. That would make me happy. And no, I mean, it's simple things like being together to have a meal makes me happy. Being in a library, talking to a person, right? Talking to friends over like some, a cup of tea, like very small things. Can
can make us happy. And I think it's important to remember what those things are and to like nurture the presence of those things in your life, right? Like tune in to whatever those things are, right? And so I think that spirit of happiness, but also like gratitude, you know? I don't know, I'm not saying that's explicit in the book, but I think remembering to be thankful for those small things that make us happy is important too, so. Important now, especially. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, yeah. And what, we're gonna end with, what is happiness for you and what makes you happy about living in Rhode Island? <laughs> Okay, so a happiness for me, um, definitely my family, right? My Definitely my family. Um, I think somehow the pandemic has just made me pivot a lot more on these people who, you know, we can all drive each other crazy, mm -hmm. but they bring absolute joy to me, and I'm so thankful for them. Um, quiet also, like all the way on the other end, mm. quiet makes me extremely happy. <laughs> no, really, I love just being quiet and writing, right? Dancing makes me really happy. That's a, see how I, it's all contradiction, right? Dancing to extremely loud music makes me really happy as well. Um, and Rhode Island, yeah, one of the things I love is that we, you know, coming from New York, the pace of life is so different here, right? It's so different. And our quality of life is different. We have more time to spend with each other. And so that's, that's, a, that's a huge thing for me, right? That's something that really makes me happy. My friends here make me happy. Like I have a, a small group of people who quickly became friends and finding community is amazing, right? In mm -hmm. any place. And so people have been very kind to us here, very generous. And I mean, that, that really adds to my sense of joy. And then there's the forest. You have all these beautiful green spaces, which I love walking through. And we take a lot of walks. And then there's the beach, which is like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I love the beach. And the beach is a place where I feel like I get the best of everything. So the beach, that's like, what is that, number four? <laughs> my goodness. And then number five, I, you know, I like the little, the bookstores, like places where you can just like, I, I have a couple of bookstores I love and mm -hmm. those places make me extremely happy, right? I, I don't wanna say some and leave some out, I don't right, know right. that, right? But there are some really wonderful independent bookstores that really, they, they're nurturing and they've been very supportive of Layla's happiness. So those are some of the things that make me happy. I know there, there are probably more even. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> thank, well, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm gonna hug you because we can hug Yay! you. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> no, thank you. What an honor. Thank oh, you so thank you. much. Thank you and thank all your colleagues and the board and everything. This was a huge surprise. <laughs> I'm so glad because we are so thrilled and we can't wait to share Leela's happiness with all of Rhode Island. Yay, thank you. <laughs>